Well, the ultimate OG healer returns. Great. This means we're going to be having those old item discussions, aren't we? What's going on everyone, Talon back here, and today we are going to be doing a two-part video, or you get two parts in one video, you get the idea, it's, it's been a long day, it's really hot here anyway. Anyway, so we're going to be talking about two things, A, we're going to be talking about the Buhan EZA details that we just got, we don't, I, we don't know what team to technically take it down is, but we actually do know from the event, or from the news itself in the game, so I'm going to make sure to remind you guys that after I go ahead and translate the card here itself. And then we're going to be going into kind of a should you summon slash, uh, you know, is he worth it type of summon for the new card coming to global less than a month till your four year anniversary or about the time of this recording for exactly one month until your four year anniversary. So uh, we'll have to wait and see. But anyway, so let's get into all the details on the OG, well, everyone used to consider the OG healer and everything. Everyone ran them, everyone used them, everyone loved using them, and then everyone would just be like, Psh, I don't have to waste my items now. And then, oh my god, that that discussion was really weird. It's like, yeah, okay, I get it, but items are meant to be used. Why are you stockpiling them? Stockpiling your items doesn't really do much unless all of a sudden you have to go into just huge sprawl of doing events for some reason that require random healing items. I don't know. It was always a weird conversation to me, so... I don't know. Yeah, great. He heals and everything, but I mean, a lot of characters still heal to this day too. So anyway, anyway, let's take a look at what Buhan does here because he's definitely pretty powerful. He's, he's kind of a, he's what I would expected from an EZA of the 70% God leaders as we used to call them essentially. So anyway, int types, key plus four stats up 100%. Standard stuff. We saw this with the tech go tanks. Okay, cool. I'm all for it. All right, passive skill. This was a big one, right? This is the, the passive skill is what makes or breaks some of these units. Let's see what he does. So for every orb obtained, attack up 17% and defense up 10%, and he heals 10,000 HP. Okay, so he's going to be healing quite a bit. Um, the one thing I personally would have liked to have seen is maybe make a little bit efficient in terms of the, you know, this nuking ability. Um, maybe it'd be an orb, you know, changer at the same time. You know, one of those, you know, like if, if you're facing off against a certain enemy, randomly change the, uh, orbs into rain, one color orb into a rainbow, not just blatantly make him change, you know, some color into some massive, uh, int orb or something like that. And then all of a sudden he's like completely OP or something like that. But you know, again, they, they love to throw in these random parts of the passive skills. It's like, Hey, you're facing a Batara guy or something like that. So you're going to change one random type of orb to, a rainbow and again it wouldn't be every single opponent you're facing against but if you happen to be facing as a batara unit then hey by the way we're gonna make this guy a little bit more crazy so i mean i don't know i, I thought maybe something like that would have happened but you know whatever it is what it is so anyway and then the final part it was a little weird when i first read this but then it made sense but then at the same time kind of like feels a little random not gonna lie it kind of fits with who he is but at the same time again feels random uh so right here it says techie ni me oh uh what the no tan no what he need a what oh sorry yeah i sorry trying to translate this kanji is a little bit so a wari no toki ni hp goju pasento uh kai fusugu okay so basically what this means is that if he finishes the enemy off or i guess that turn essentially if he finishes the enemy to go either into the next stage or the event is over or something like that he'll heal up 15 percent of your health okay um, it does not, he is not going to recover the, for, I don't know why, I, I saw this on Twitter for some reason, a lot of people were thinking that he will recover 15% of the health from the enemy or something like that. It's like, mm, no, he just he's going to recover 15% of your health, you know, so your total health that you have, he'll recover 15% of that when he finishes it off. So, and then on top of that, obviously, you know, just via his nuking ability, he's going to be able to heal up 10,000. So, I mean, that's definitely pretty good. So, obviously, Boo, Boo's in a weird position because he, we, we don't really run type teams anymore, right? Like, back in the day, yeah, you ran him on a Nids team, you ran him with, like, the Antigen Nimba, you ran him with the, uh, like, even the LR Piccolo because they shared shocking speed and everything, and all you needed was four key to get him up to that, at least to get a super attack, and then, you know, if you got more orbs, then great. Last thing on his super attack, speaking of which, is that his, he lowers the enemy's attack and defense greatly. Okay, pretty cool right there. Um, I don't know if they're going to do something like where if you go into, you know, because if you guys remember with his SA, 
uh, when he if he does the ghost card in my haw attack or something like that, it increases the damage a little bit or something. I don't know if that's I'm guessing that's still in the super attack, but we'll have to wait and see when we get the data download. Most likely tomorrow, I'm guessing we'll see if maybe that changes things a little bit more and if maybe that great or greatly lowering attack and defense is a little bit more than what we expect, or if it's just it's kind of the same thing. Maybe the damage is gonna be a little bit more. We don't know really how the calculations are gonna go. We'll have to wait and see. Uh, that can make his output a little bit better. So. Um, but anyway, so, but his best team, though, as of right now, is basically be the transformation team, which is under the STR Boo, which, funny enough, goes into Buhan as well. So, um, I don't know. We'll have to see if, what he, if he, if he really fits onto there. Um, I know, obviously, with Buhan, uh, he, he's not like every other Boo, because most Boos, you know, they link together really, really well for all that attack and everything, but then the uh key links are atrocious right buhan's the one exception he does get shocking speed but overall still you know depending on what team you run him on <coughs> kind of atrocious when it comes to certain uh key links no no one can dispute that right we've all known that about boo for quite a long time so i don't know we'll have to wait and see what's going to happen with the, with the buhan here i got i've had all pass unlock for quite a while i still don't have rainbow though i just never felt the need to rainbow him maybe that will change the problem is though i think that one thing that uh, two, well, actually two things technically and it's not it's not a problem with the card itself it's the team that he be from, and that is finding those STR boos lead, okay? Uh, not exactly the easiest thing to find, even to this day. So that will probably be the biggest thing to kind of, you know, be like, okay, I really want to use this guy. I've got the great team for it and everything like that. Uh, can't find the boo team or the boo leader. Huh, this is a little... Uh, it's a little weird, and I know not many people summon for the boo because both of the banners that he's come around on, kind of a lot of people skipped him. Uh, you know, or some people were kind of like, okay, he's a good card and everything, but I'm still going to skip the banner. It's not really something I'm going to be going for, which is totally fine. You're allowed to do that. So I, I personally see that being the biggest problem right there, right? You know, it's, it's finding that friend leader, which you could say about a lot of different cards, but Buhan especially, right? Um... In terms of, again, finding that STR boo. So we'll have to wait and see if that's going to happen. And then this part right here, the Todo Meda, which is essentially him having to finish off the opponents. Obviously, Doken events, you know, whatever. You, he's, it's not going to make any difference if he gains back the HP after defeating them. Because, again, Doken Fests are a piece of cake. No problem, right? Super Battle Road, it's definitely going to be helpful there for Super Battle Road. But the one thing I do am, I am curious about is, you know... It's not always easy to, you know, delay the fight or to do this to make sure that Buhan is the right guy to finish that opponent off, right? Obviously, if you're facing off against five opponents and they all have lesser health and everything, then yeah, Buhan, right then and there, you're going to put him in wherever if he's got a decent amount of orbs. Boom, you wipe one guy out, and hey, he's also healed by that way, by defeating that one guy as well. However, if you're facing off against, you know, let's say, oh, I don't know, the Majin Buu Saga... Uh, super battle road or you're doing a super battle road where it's only one opponent you know that can be a little weird i would i guess i would want to say i'm not really sure well i, I, I want to test this guy out when i have when he comes out on thursday we'll definitely have to wait and see what he can do um on that particular on that particular type of team so we'll have to wait and see obviously the healing is amazing the attack and defense is it's what we expected i think from an easy a so overall i'm definitely excited uh team to, or team to beat this guy is supposed to be the patara team the, the little patara category banner will be coming out as well on thursday at the time of the easy a along with the easy a banner itself so i guess if you want him go ahead and summon for him I wouldn't necessarily say he's worth the summon, but if you do have him, obviously, then getting the EZA. But hey, it's 33 stones as well, so we'll have to wait and see. Uh, yeah, I I don't know. I, I, I'm excited for him. He's, he's a good card. He's definitely strong. He's just right in there. I, I don't have much more to say about him, I guess. So yeah, we're going to move on to the second part of this video. So the second part of this is going to be the fact that Global, you are getting a new Dokken Fest event, which I guess many, many of you expected because you still have a month left until the year four anniversary. It's Kid Goku. Now, Kid Goku, he's actually a really good card, but I can already I can already see into the future right now that no one or very few people are going to be summoning for this guy simply because a you just had the double LR banners with the LR Go Bros and the LR Broly, and you have Year Four coming up. I, I I know Kid Goku is iconic and everything, and I know a lot of people at the very beginning were saying like on Global like when it came out on JP that oh I'm going to go for him, but where he is sandwiched right now for global i get the feeling that a lot of people are probably gonna skip him and i don't blame you i don't because it's like you got the year four anniversary coming up why why would i summon him for that one of this 
And if we look back at his banner, this is what was on JP. Now, uh, Global could change it up a bit, but recently they haven't really changed up the banners. They really haven't. Maybe they changed one character, but this was the banner that you got, okay? So you got a new Jackie Chung, you got a King Piccolo, and you got a uh, Kid Goku, okay? So let's take a look what the Kid Goku does real quick, okay? So I'm actually going to open him up here real quick. So we can just go ahead and take a look, okay? So I don't need that. Uh, no, right there. Exit. Okay, so this is the Goku. So he's basically the, I don't want to say younglings, but that's essentially what I call it. I, I, I know it's not the technical term for it. I simply call it younglings or the youth, the youth category, essentially. Okay, so he's the youth category, key plus three, HP attack and defense up 170%. That's including things like Gotens, Trunkses, Kid Trunkses at least, uh, Gotenkses, uh, you know, and, and then like that. And then he's also the, uh, the youth category for the um for a lot of the other characters like the drag some of the dragon ball characters and everything so uh their stats up 150 percent so he's a dual category lead so again he gives them a high uh, boost because you know that's just what he gives i'll also up the category here in just one second as well super attack he does he has a pretty cool super attack animation does immense damage which you'd expect and he has a medium chance to stun so he's actually really good for something like super battle road definitely really good passive skill own attack and defense up 77 percent and then basically, the more HP you have, the more attack you have. So a total of 59% if you're at max HP, basically. The lower your health, then the higher your defense goes, which is a 59%. So basically, he's very similar to that part of uh, LR Bojack. The more HP you have, the more attack. The less HP, the more defense you have. Okay, so that's definitely pretty good right there. Um, and then at the beginning of the turn, for every single turn, you get plus one key attack and defense up 10%. Uh, for an additional, uh, by a total additional of 59%. And if your HP is 59% or above for one time, you get an automatic critical. And then also, I believe if your HP is 59% or below, then you also activate his active skill, which is just a, a big Kamehameha. It's the one, you know, it's the iconic one where he shoots the Kamehameha at the ground, flies into your stomach, essentially, and, you know, he beats you up, essentially. Um, so... That part of the active skill is a little, eh, you know, because 59%, yeah, the Goku and SBR would be about the one place maybe if you get the right rotation in time and everything like that. But overall, you're not really going to see that, unfortunately. But overall, though, again, <laughs> I feel like I'm saying overall uh, a lot, the, the Kid Goku is really good. He's a good card. Uh, his category itself, if you come down here and we take a look at it, it was after Movie Heroes. Uh, here it is. So this is this is one of the categories and this is the other one. Uh, so again, it's mostly a lot of uh, Gohans, you know, again, young fighters, essentially. I'll, I guess I'll call that young fighters. Sure, why not? I don't know. Uh, anyway, so Pan's in there, you know, Kid Vegeta, a lot of Gotenks, Arale, if Arale ever comes back, I guess. Um, this Goku here can definitely shine under him, so that's definitely really good. So a lot of cool stuff, and obviously the LR, Goku, and Arale are really good. And then this is kind of more, this is more along the line, kind of like a Dragon Ball category, sort of. Even though the Kanji itself is, that literally, that, that doesn't mean Dragon Ball. Uh, but this Piccolo and this Jackie Chung are also category leaders for that at 120%, so they're pretty good. Um, but yeah, so those are the categories that you'll be seeing right there for the, for this particular Goku, okay? So again, I know a lot of people are probably going to skip this though, because again, you've got year four anniversary coming up. He is worth the summons. I had to skip him, unfortunately, because he was right after the year four anniversary. Um, funny enough, we actually did get first place in the App Store on iOS, so we got 30 free stones from that when this guy came out originally, so... I don't know, definitely really interesting. But uh, anyway, let me hear your thoughts down below, guys. Are you going to summon for the Goku? I get a feeling I'm seeing, going to see a lot of no's. I might see some hardcore fans say yes, but again, I don't blame you for not going for him. The banner itself is, it's a little left to be desired, um, you know, because again, these units are cool, but these two right here, the Jackie Chung and the King Piccolo, they will be on every banner going forward. So, you know, you don't have to worry about pulling them. The Boo, the Super Vegito, the Omega Shenron, and the SSA3 Gotenks. Again, kind of weird. So, you know, if, if you don't have these guys and you really want them, then I guess go for them. But again, I think a lot of people probably will not go for them. So uh, it'll be interesting to see. Maybe, I'm, maybe my, I'm, I can eat my own words and be like, okay, you know what? Go put me wrong. You guys got to go for them. That's great. Uh, but again, I, I just don't think he's going to go. So anyway, guys, so two things, two questions down below in the comments to let me know. A. Uh, Buhan's ECA, what are your thoughts on him? Do you think he's really good? Do you think that ending part's a little bit of a gimmick? Do you think it'll be weird to put him onto a team? Do you think he'll struggle for key sometimes, depending on what guys you run, unless you're running a lot of supports? All that fun stuff. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments on that. 
and B, global players. Will you be going for the Kid Goku, or are you going to be skipping like probably most people will? And give me your reasons why, okay? So anyway, guys, that's going to be it for the video. Let me your thoughts down below the com again in the comments. Leave, uh, leave a sub if you happen to have be new or anything like that. And I'm tripping over my own words right now. I'm going to head out because it's really late here. So yeah. Anyway, guys, that's going to be it for the video, though. Until next time, everyone. I'll see you all in the next one.